All right, I'm gonna take the mask off. I'm at 15%. This is my heart rate. Let's see how it works. All right, the mask is off now. All right, so for the next 10 weeks, I'm gonna be training using an altitude tent for either sleeping, training, uh, train high, sleep low. Uh, I, I do like the idea of sleeping low, but I'm gonna be putting my altitude tent together, uh, and then for the next 10 weeks before my 50K, I am going to see how I progress and use it at least three times a week. I'll be seeing if my uh, hemoglobin levels change. I'm using the Human X and I'll be posting that soon. Uh, either way, keep updated, look at the video. I'll be adding markers to the top of this and the description over the next 10 weeks. Uh, the training is starting now at the end of September and my big event will be at the beginning of December. So stay tuned, I'm gonna put this thing together. I have an altitude tank generator that goes up to 12,500 feet. That is plus your current altitude. I'm at 187 feet right now, so we'll just go ahead and say 12,687 feet or 12,500. That's really high. I recently did the Long's Peak hike and I wish I had been using the system. I haven't used it for two years and it could have helped tremendous. One of over 14,000 feet. The way the altitude simulator works is it pumps air in and it actually draws out oxygen molecules. So it reduces the amount of oxygen, oxygen actually in the air that it's putting out. With the tent, you want to prime the tent. Essentially, you can go ahead and put the hose in there and let it do its thing for a while because whenever you put the tent up, it's going to have that 21% oxygen and then as you pump it in, it's going to essentially dilute it out. You can have an oxygen sensor in there or you can just go by the recommended settings. After probably two or three hours, you're going to be at your wanted altitude. If you're using a face mask, it's going to be immediate. It's going to come straight out. There will be a little bit of restriction coming through the hoses, but that's pretty acceptable considering your overall VO2 max and everything from what I've noticed in the past increases within 20 days. It's not something that immediately happens. You have to work on it and it's hard. you're going to be sleeping high and either training a lot high or training low you need to be aware that your recovery time is going to be increased so it's going to take you longer to recover essentially you're doing a workout that night and your body's adapting your your body your pituitary gland is sensing that you're going to hypoxia or at a certain level and it's going to create more red blood cells you're not gonna be as efficient at recovering overnight. So do everything you can, make sure you stay well hydrated and reduce the overall intensity and duration of your workouts the day before. They can help tremendously. Sleeping in an altitude tent, you're gonna notice one of the biggest discomforts is going to be the humidity and heat buildup. Make sure you have a fan. And what I would recommend is if you've ever seen those coolers that you can put ice in and it has a hole and a fan and it's kind of like a beach day cooler and it blows the air across the ice, I would highly, highly, highly recommend one of those. What it's gonna allow is the humid air to come in that you're breathing out and your body's putting off to go in there, condense on the ice, and then cool air to be brought out. Also, you see I have an air conditioner right here. What I would do if I were gonna be sleeping in it, would point the air conditioner right at the tent, let it blow on it as cold as I could, then water is actually gonna condense on the side of the tent and I have like a, a towel or something. Highly recommend.
Sleeping with multiple people in the tent is not necessarily a good idea. You're going to be having trouble either way, keeping the temperature just right for you so that you can get to sleep. Having more people in there, unless you're able to deal with the humidity, I don't think it's necessarily going to be comfortable. It is worth a try. And like I said, get the ice, get the ice bucket if you can put something in there for the, the uh, humidity to condense on, it's going to be that much better. I've almost got the tent up. As you can see, it's uh, slowly letting air in it. It's an airtight tent. Uh, if I sleep in this, it's going to be more so uh, with the blow-up mattress, which is really easy to put in there. Plus, the blow-up mattress is going to take up expenses of air so that there's going to be less priming to do. And the air that's being pumped in from the generator is going to be clean and clear, humidity free, so it's gonna keep the air a little bit better. I would definitely recommend doing something like that or encase your mattress in something that doesn't let air into because the mattress itself will uh, get moisture and everything in it. Tech actually had a much, much, much larger tent that came with the generator itself. It had a huge dome. You could put a king size bed in it. It was too big. I actually sold it to recoup some of my costs from the generator itself and got something much smaller, something much more manageable. This would be much better to sleep in and it doesn't take nearly as long to prime. All right, I've got the tent set up. I've got the blow up mattress in it, fully pumped up. I've got everything closed. I'm gonna turn on my vacuum in reverse. I'm gonna pump air into it and see how airtight it is. All right, so it's nice and pumped up. All right. All right, I got a reservoir bag. Back whenever I was using it, uh, after it kind of inflates, deflates so much, uh, the plastic on the top got uh, a little brittle and broke, I guess, from all the movement. All right, I have some medical bags attached to it. Uh, that's because the system, whenever it, it releases air, it, it shoves a lot of air out at once. Uh, I've got an exercise mask here, a CPAP a sleep mask, so if you don't want to sleep in your tent. Then you have the adjuster right here, and this is how you set. And whenever, it'll, it'll start running, it'll be low, and then once it starts pushing big air out, that's where you'll see where the setting is. All right, so me breathing, I can actually take out that bag. All right, so I'm getting a little lightheaded. Uh, it's got a really good flow, especially with the balloon on top. Uh, and if you're breathing, you're not gonna have this bag pumped up nearly as much. All right, stay posted. I'm gonna do videos of me actually exercising on the treadmill with it, maybe getting inside the tent and doing some other things. I hope you found the video helpful. All right, so today will be my first workout at altitude. It's going to be a 15 mile run on the treadmill. It's going to kind of be a little bit of an introduction uh, to altitude. I don't want to overdo it, especially having Chicago coming up in a few weeks. So what I plan to do today is a mile run and every mile I'll make a transition and I'll put the altitude mask on and be at 9,000 or 10,000 feet for a half mile.
they take the mask off, I'm back 15%. This is my heart rate. Let's see how it works. All right, the mask is off now. That's pretty good. 10 points. I'm at 10,000 feet altitude when I'm on it. 